Hello grade 10s and welcome back to another video with me Miss Martins. In today's video we're going to be looking at longitudinal waves and introduction. If you've missed any of my videos on waves check out the description box below where I will link my playlist. Now let's jump right into longitudinal waves. You can see a longitudinal wave behind me. Now the first thing that you need to know and I hope you've watched my other videos is that longitudinal waves are a mechanical wave, or they're a type of a mechanical wave. Now remember, mechanical waves are waves that require a medium to travel through. We've got transverse waves, which I've already been through with you, and we've got longitudinal waves, which are behind me. Now sound waves are an example of longitudinal waves. Now what makes longitudinal waves different to transverse waves? Remember, a transverse wave is a wave in which the particles of the medium vibrate at right angles, so 90 degrees, to the direction of motion of the wave. So what that means, for example, is the particles of the medium, or the particles of the air, or the water, whatever, go up or down, and the wave itself travels left or right. I hope you can see it's a 90 degree angle. And a longitudinal wave is different, because in a longitudinal wave, a longitudinal wave is a wave in which the particles of the medium vibrate parallel to the direction of motion of a wave. So a transverse wave is basically perpendicular like this, so particles go up and down, wave goes left or right. A longitudinal wave is particles move like this along the x-axis for example, and the wave travels like this along the x-axis, so parallel to the direction of motion of the wave. So as you can see behind me, this that's the definition for a longitudinal wave. And this is what a longitudinal wave looks like. So here is a, another comparison between a longitudinal wave and a transverse wave. Transverse wave, just another diagram to illustrate some of the differences. And I want you to think of a longitudinal wave and the way in which it moves as a slinky, almost. So basically what ends up happening is the particles move like this. So this is a particle, this round dot represents a particle. This is the rest position of the particle. So think about a slinky. If I have to tie a little rope to the slinky, think about it like this. The rope in the slinky, if I wiggle the slinky like that, move it back and forth, the, the rope will move like this. It'll bounce like that. It'll move back to its rest position. It'll bounce in the opposite direction, move back to its rest position. This distance over here, so the distance between its rest position and its maximum distance, that's called the amplitude. Just keep that in mind. So the particles move like this, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and the direction of the wave is like this. So particles move left and right, the direction of the wave is left or right, so you can see that they are parallel to one another. So this is just an example, this is just showing you. Each particle in the spring or the slinky moves forwards and backwards and then returns to its original rest position. And when this happens, energy is transferred from one particle to the next. So remember, all waves transfer energy. And what ends up happening in my wave is that I have areas of compression. So compression is a region of high pressure in a longitudinal wave and a rarefaction. So this is a compression, this is a compression, this section over here is what we call a rarefaction. And a rarefaction is a region of low pressure in a longitudinal wave. So think about it where it's all bunched up tightly like that, that's a compression, and where it's loose like this, that's a rarefaction. And what do you think this corresponds to if I have to think about a transverse wave? Remember transverse wave looks like this. Remember in a transverse wave we have crests, and we also have troughs. So I, what I want you to think of it is like this. The areas of high pressure, so the compression, that's like a crest. Crest, compression, and the regions or the areas of low pressure, the rarefactions, that's like a trough. So what's important to note, and remember when we did transverse waves, we said the distance between two successive points in phase, or two successive crests, in other words, one crest that comes after the next crest, the distance between those, that gave me what I called the wavelength in a transverse wave. And it works similarly in a longitudinal wave. If I take the compression over here, the middle of the compression over there, and the middle of the next compression, those are two points in phase. If I connect those points, that will give me the wavelength of the wave. Okay, so here's another diagram to illustrate compression and rarefaction. And just so you know, like I showed you, 
the distance between the saints of one compression and the saints of the next compression, that is the wavelength. So they can ask you to work out the wavelength for a longitudinal wave. It would be the distance between the saints of this compression and the saints of this compression, or the saints of this ray faction and the saints of this ray faction. Now, what is amplitude? Amplitude, just like with transverse waves, amplitude is the maximum displacement of a particle from its rest position. So remember here, the particle starts out in its rest position, then it's displaced. In other words, it moves to its maximum distance away from that rest position. That distance over there is called the amplitude. Then it does the same thing in the opposite direction. Here's its rest position. Here's its maximum displacement in the other direction. Again, that distance is called the amplitude. Right. Now, what other properties of the wave or variables relating to the wave can you remember from transverse waves? So we've spoken about amplitude. We've spoken about wavelength. We've spoken about compression and refaction, which co corresponds to the crest and the trough. Do you remember frequency? Well, remember the frequency of a transverse wave. That was the number of wave pulses that pass a point per second or the number of crests that pass a given point per second, or the amount of wavelengths that pass a point per second. So the frequency of a transverse wave is very similar to the frequency of a longitudinal wave. For the frequency of a longitudinal wave, you can think of it as the number of compressions that pass a point per second. The number of compressions that pass a point per second. So if I say the frequency is 2 hertz, it means that two compressions, yeah, one, two pass a given point in one second and period was my other variable or my other quantity and period remember for a transverse wave was it was the time taken for one complete wave pulse or wave to pass a given point it's the same thing for longitudinal waves and remember grade tens we learned about how period and frequency are related to one another Remember, period and frequency are reciprocals of one another, which means if I know the frequency, I can easily get the period and vice versa. So, for example, if I say the frequency is 2 hertz, then I know the period is 1 over 2 hertz. If I say that the period is 5 seconds, then the frequency is 1 over 5 hertz. Sorry, this period, that unit over there should be seconds. Okay. So the unit for frequency is hertz, and my unit for period is seconds. They are reciprocals. So if I tell you the frequency is 2 over 3 hertz, you can tell me, oh, the period is 3 over 2 seconds. Reciprocal means I flip the fraction. But we also have these formulas that I can use to calculate it. And just like we did with transverse waves, we can work out the wave speed for a longitudinal wave. All we need is the frequency and the wavelength. So it says here the wave speed is the speed at which each compression in a longitudinal wave appears to move. So remember we have compression and then we have rarefaction and then compression and rarefaction. So the speed is the speed at which each compression appears to move. We get the wavelength which remember the wavelength is the distance between two compressions and we multiply that by the frequency and remember frequency is the number of compressions that pass per second and that gives me the speed and I hope you can remember that wavelength is measured in meters, frequency is measured in hertz and speed is measured in meters per second. We discuss wave speed in a completely different video as well as frequency and period, and as well as wavelength, they each have their own video relating to the wave speed of transverse waves, but you can watch that video to help you understand these variables and this triangle and how to calculate wave speed a little bit better. I'll link the playlist in the description box below. And the last thing that you need to know before we move on to the next video is that sound waves are longitudinal waves. And I want you to think of sound waves as pressure waves okay we got regions of high pressure we know that's a compression region of low pressure remember when i speak i'm speaking and i am disturbing the particles of the air and energy is transferred from one air particle to the next 
Sound waves are pressure waves. They are vibrations that propagate or move through a medium. So they move through water, they move through air, and they do this as a longitudinal wave, as a series of compressions and rarefactions. That's it for longitudinal waves. I hope to see you in the next video where we talk more in detail about sound waves and we do some calculations. I'll see you then.